Hey guys, okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about impulse control. So I've got some roasted chicken here that I've just cut up into a few cubes. This is what I'm gonna be using. As you can tell, Kim is very excited at the opportunity to have some roasted chicken today. So we're talking about impulse control. So if you have dogs who, when you open the door, they rush out underneath your feet and run out the door, that's a problem. Um, and we wanna make sure that we are, my girl, we wanna make sure that we're keeping them safe, right? Obviously them rushing out under your feet is an issue. Um, especially when we're talking about their safety because they could run straight out into the road and get hit by a car. Um, or, I mean, that's obviously one of the worst case scenarios we can think of, but we want to make sure and plan for that to not happen. Um, so we need to get your dog's impulse control under control. game because I always like to make sure anytime we're training with our dogs that they're having fun. They're going to learn so much better that way. So one thing I would suggest doing is, and I, I talk about this um, here and there throughout the course, um, anytime we're training, no matter what it is we're doing, if we're training something really simple like a sit or if we're going through even more elaborate things um, if you're trying to teach your dog scent work or if you're trying to teach your dog, you know, obstacle course work or just anything that, that might be difficult for your dog. And for some dogs, you know, different, different things are going to be dif difficult, uh, more or less for different dogs. They're all individuals just like we are. And it just depends on their, their level of, you know, activity, anxiety, all these different things come into effect, uh, come into play when we're talking about, um, uh, training. So some things that are easy for one dog may be difficult for another dog. So we have to take that into account as well. So we need to find your dog, uh, high value rewards for your dog. It doesn't always have to be food. In fact, um, I'm gonna be using food in this demonstration because it's very accessible and I wanna make sure that when I'm showing you uh, what I want you to do, that uh, Kim is helping me the best way possible. But it doesn't always have to be food. If it is food, like I'm doing today, Make sure when uh, their next meal time comes that you are taking into account what you've given them in treats for training and remove that extra, the extra calories from their meal the next time. So when I feed her her dinner tonight, I will definitely take into account that I fed her some roasted chicken. Um, but what we wanna do, we'll get back to the point at hand, we're talking about impulse control. So I wanna make it a game. And anytime we finish a training session, whether your dog is doing really well with that particular cue or they haven't quite mastered it yet, it's okay. We always wanna end on a high note. So even if your dog maybe didn't quite get what you were going for that day, that's okay. Um, don't end frustrated, don't end like with a ton of anxiety yourself because that's gonna affect your next training session. Always end on a positive note. Um, one thing I do recommend doing is end with a cue that they do know, something pretty simple, maybe a sit, um, and then go and have a little bit of a play session. You wanna make sure that when you're done with training, your dog has in their head, this was super fun and exciting. They love doing this with you. So always end on a positive note, both for you and your pet. So, all right, come on, sweetie. Pets, my girl. So let's talk about impulse control. I don't want her running out the door. So what I have trained her to do, I tell her to stay and she sits right here by the door and she doesn't walk out the door until I give her another cue word letting her know it's okay for her to walk through the door. So how do we train this? Um, one at a time, first of all, if you have multiple dogs, we do wanna do this one dog at a time. Um, especially if you have, you know, Kim is a, a smaller dog. She's not the smallest dog, but she's a smaller dog. Um, at around 15 pounds, I don't have a hard time. Like she, if she pushes up against me, I'm not gonna fall over. If you have a larger dog and you do have a dog that can just barrel right through you and push you over, start out with your dog on a leash so that you know you have 
control that they're not going to run through the door when you're trying to, or, you know, push open the door, even though you're pushing against it. So start out on a leash. If you do have a larger dog who can just barrel right through you and push you over. But with Kim, she's not going to be able to do that with me. So I'm not as concerned. I'm not going to start out with her on a leash, but let's turn this into a fun little game. So what we want to do is anytime we go to open the door, we're going to start pretty simply. Um, however your dog would normally react and we can you can take this in as many baby steps as you need to Thank you for being such a good girl. Okay What would happen normally if you put your hand on the door? I'm gonna unlock it So <laughs> if you unlock the door you can put your hand on the door if your dog comes barreling over to the door What you're gonna do is give them a cue um, I, I tell my dog to stay sometimes people would prefer a wait. They want to distinguish a stay and a wait That's okay. I'm gonna tell I tell her to stay and she's she's she knows not to come running already when I just put my hand on the door. So the next step would be maybe you start to open the door. What did your dog do when you start to open the door? Are they gonna barrel around and rush through to try to get through the door? Well, if they are, if you know if they put their noses up to the door like they're trying to push and get out, close the door again. Okay? Give them the cue to stay or wait. As soon as they do so, give them a treat. Because that's what we want here we want to give them the cue of stay or wait if you're dealing with a dog who's hearing impaired this is what i like to do it's just a flat calm stay that's what i use um and you, you can use different hand signals i tend to use a combination because i had a dog previously who um as she aged she lost her hearing so when i would uh, use cues like stay or sit i incorporated hand signals as well that way, if your dog does ever get to a point where they lose their hearing, they already know the hand signal. So she's doing really good. This is what she would normally do. This is her stay. Good job. Good job, my love. And just take it baby steps, right? Put your hand on the door, open the door. Stay. Good job, my love. See how she pulled her head away from the door when I told her to stay? That's exactly what we're looking for, and that's the behavior we're going to reward in your dogs. Um, depending on how headstrong your dog is. First of all, let me say, if you've put the seven canine commandments in place in your home, especially that be the protector commandment, um, this is going to be so much easier for you because if you have already let your dog know, if you've already put into your home the fact that your dog is to alert you and you are then to take over and become the protector, this right here is going to become so much easier for you. So if you don't already, uh, if you haven't already gone through the seven canine commandments, go back through, and um, read the book, which the seven miracle steps to train your dog is all about the seven canine commandments. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get to the point, I'm gonna stand up, so I'm gonna come up, kind of be out of frame for a minute. But once we actually get to the point where we have the door open, now I have I have a, a screen door here. Um, but, okay, give me a second. Good job. So right here where we have the door open and the and your dog is right here at the door. Again, we're gonna ask for a stay or a wait. Okay, here we go. Now, once we open the door, once your dog has um, mastered the stay and wait at the door right here, which is great. And remember, we're doing this one dog at a time if you have multiple dogs in the household. Um, then when we actually open the door and you step on the other side of the door, you're going to need another cue word to release your dog and let them know it's okay to cross that threshold and go outside. Um, for me, for me, I'm gonna shut the door just because it's it's a little noisy with that door open. For me, um, I just tell Kim, okay, I'm gonna give her another little treat because she's being such a good girl. <laughs> being so good and healthy. Okay, so I just tell her, okay, and she knows she's released from her stay and she knows she can walk over that threshold. A lot of people prefer to use words that are not commonly found in their everyday vocabulary. So you can definitely choose another word to use to release your dog from the stay or wait position. Um, a couple other things I do wanna talk about. Um, once you get where you need to be with one dog, then you can start bringing your other dogs in and doing it with multiple dogs at the same time. Um, and you may have to kind of start over a little bit. They're going to distract each other. They're gonna see what they can get away with um, when you have multiple dogs in front of you and that's okay. 
make sure you have your cues down pat with one dog and then each individual dog on their own before you start bringing them together, especially um, if you know they're just gonna overpower you. You definitely wanna be um, cognizant of what you're gonna be able to do and what you wanna prevent your dogs from doing to you. So um, that's basically the, the kind of game that we play when we are teaching impulse control. We also wanna do this not just at one door. We want to start at one door or one entry point and then also practice this at other entry points in and around your home. For example, a front door and a back door, a side door, a garage door. Um, ask your friends, uh, neighbors, and family if you can bring your dog over and train with their entry points as well so your dogs learn that this is something that you expect from them at every doorway you come to. Um, if you have friends or family that have businesses or offices, ask if you can come to the business or um, office and train at those entry points as well. This is really going to ingrain in your dog that you expect this behavior every time you give that stay or wait cue. Every time you just want to keep doing this over and over so they understand that it doesn't matter the entry point, you expect the same behavior at every single entry point. So um, that's really how we train impulse control. We give them a cue, we um, don't allow them to actually run through the door. We're going to take a step back, like I was showing you, if they try to push into the door when you're opening it, close the door again. Give them the cue to stay or wait one more time. Reward that stay or wait when they do give it to you. And when they don't give it to you, you take another step back and let them know that what you're looking for and be um, consistent with this. That's another really big key. Again, going back to the seven canine commandments, consistency is going to make a huge difference. If you know, you're in that training process and you let it slide one time and you don't ask for the cue and back up when they don't give it to you, they're gonna know you have a weak, weak point and they're gonna push through. So remain consistent, be positive, always end every training session on a positive note, even if that is with playtime, um, make sure you and your dog are both happy at the end of every training session. That way, the next time you go to train, it's gonna be so much easier. They're gonna to want to train with you the next time. You're gonna to wanna to train the next time. So make sure to end on a positive note. And with that, we'll, um, I'll go ahead and end this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. And let me know how this is working for your dogs. So again, I'm Jessica, the Bright Family Coach. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.